Disney isn't the only company that had an earnings call. Warner Brothers also had one, and we got to learn just how bad things are for them. So Warner Brothers Discovery reports game division saw 41% decline in revenue, and that is, of course, thanks to everyone's favorite disaster, Side Squad Kill the Justice League, a game that has lost over 98% of its players' base. I wonder why that happened. You know, this game could have been a hit. This could have absolutely been a hit. But this game is such a mess. They went all in with whatever the hell Sweet Baby wanted them to do. I mean, look at Victoria Freeze. And I'm still laughing because when I first talked about this, I remember when this leaked and you could see just how god-awful this character design is. And people were saying, oh, that's that's Nora. No, <laughs> it's not. It's just gender-flipped Mr. Freeze. And in some cases, okay, so I haven't talked about that Batman cartoon, the new one, what is it called, Caped Crusader. I didn't bother to watch it. You know why I didn't watch it? Because J.J. Abrams was involved. I don't like his work, and I know he's just an executive producer on it, but his influence is still there. So it's kind of the same with this game. Sweet Baby's influence is there. They didn't make the game, but they had a lot of input. And this is why I haven't made any videos talking about Cape Crusader, because I already knew it was going to be a piece of shit. And sure enough, it sounds like it's a piece of shit. I, I've heard several people give their takes on it, including good reviews. And the one thing that I do hear quite a bit is that Batman's really good in it. But he's not in it that much. Like, it's more about Rene Montoya and uh, those two other... There's, like, two other women that are in it. But the... You could... So, the the... The gender flipped penguin character doesn't bother me as much as a lot of other people are talking about it. And, you know, if you don't like it, it's fine. It just doesn't bother me that much. DC Comics has done this shit a lot throughout its history before, even like, you know, all this nonsense stepped in. And they for sure did that because they just wanted to have a female villain. That's totally why they did it. But that design still at least resembles the actual penguin in a way. And I'm not trying to defend it. I'm just saying it at least she still kind of looks like the penguin. This looks nothing like Mr. Freeze. <laughs> nothing. Even the, the costume, having this fur... This first scarf is so dumb. The character's not trying to stay warm. It's a little stupid. It's a little too much. A little too much. I just don't like I don't like this design. It's incredibly stupid. And I'm not the only one that feels this way. This is why the character is getting roasted. It's a it's a joke. And you know, this isn't the first one they did it with. The Joker they put in this comes off as incredibly gay. That's why everyone calls him Gay Joker. And this game deserves everything it's getting. It could have been a hit. Like I said, if you had just, I don't know, not made fun of the games that came before it, not tried to go down this disrespectful path that they went down, mocking what came before, like literally Harley Quinn mocks her old look in this. It's just dumb. And it pisses people off. And that's why it's where, where it is. And people are still laughing at it. So they put this update out. Look at this. We can, we can see where the update landed this game, by the way. 361 players peak as of August 4th. 367 players. So it got a little bit of a spike thanks to the DLC. 
We now have a total of 367 people interested. I don't know if they're all going to come back, though, because it's been a few days and the number is just going down again. 24-hour peak of 229 people. They still have two more DLCs to go, by the way. So it's going to be fun to see how many of these hundreds of players stick around to the end. It, it really is. But here's what they had to say. Let me just go over this to close things out. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery continued to admit that the Sweet Baby Inc. influenced Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was a disaster for the company. In the company's earnings release for its 2024 Q2, the company revealed its games division revenue declined 41%. It states, games revenue declined 41% XFX, primarily driven by the weak performance of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League this year, compared to the strong performance of Hogwarts Legacy in the prior year. You could have had that. People love superhero shit. This game could have been massive. And you, you destroyed it. You could have maybe compared that somewhat to Hogwarts Legacy. I don't think it would have came even close. Well, maybe it could have hit 50% of what that game made. That game benefited from screeching monkeys getting mad about J.K. Rowling, which led to shitloads of people just buying the game to give them the middle finger. It's happening again with that Genshin Impact game, which I find absolutely hilarious. That company's revenue is going up. Because of screeching monkeys. On top of that revelation that their revenue declined 41%, the company's CEFO, Gunnar Windenfels, commented during the company's earnings call, while as we've called out last quarter games are still struggling against last year's Hogwarts legacy, and a muted response to Suicide Squad this year, the company's CEO and president of Global Streaming, addressed the game on the call as well. He said, the reality is we've had the unfortunate in the short period of 12 months, we went from having the record year that we had in 2023 with Hogwarts Legacy to unfortunately having the opposite side of the spectrum with Suicide Squad. Uh, he then detailed in the company's 2024 Q1 earnings call that the company saw a 400 million plus year over year decline. He shared starting with studios, the 400 million million plus year-over-year year decline in Q1. It's primarily due to the very tough competition we faced in games against the success of Hogwarts Legacy. Last year in the first quarter, in conjunction with the disappointing Suicide Squad release this past quarter, which we impaired, leading to a $200 million impact to EBITDA during the first quarter. He would later confirm in that call this year, Suicide Squad, one of our key video game releases in 2024, has fallen short of our expectations since its release earlier in the quarter, setting our game business up for a tough year-over-year -year comp in Q1. So, this is a disaster. And maybe what you should do, Warner Brothers, is take a real good close look at that agreement or whatever you have with Sweet Baby and get rid of it. We know you work with them. Your client. NetherRealm Studios. Your business is a client. It's time to cut ties. It's time to cut ties. Every game that gets involved with them crash and burns. We saw it recently with that game Capes. And then we saw it with that other game Flintlock. And then there was one before it. I can't remember the name. It was the... It was the game set in Africa. I, I have no idea why that game needed DEI consultants, but for some reason it had them, and that was enough. Uh, people are very turned off to anything with these people touching it, and you're going to continue to lose money. And let's not even, you know, I don't even know if they addressed Mortal Kombat 1, that game that came out. Was that what it was called? Mortal Kombat 1? Nobody Nobody's talking about that game anymore. Nobody. So, it's time to reassess things, Warner Brothers. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.